coming in live. We'll wait until we get confirmation, and there we are. Nice. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is Chicho, and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is February 16th, 2021. And we're doing a live stream that's related to investing in personal finance that's linked up with ASMR mathematics and a fair bit of other things uh, that we've been talking about. I've titled this thing, Investing in Personal Finance, General Discussion of Fiscal and Monetary Policy in Relation to the State of the Economy. But it's more than that, okay? It's gonna be more than that because we're not really gonna focus too much on uh and we're just going to brush over you know fiscal policy what it means uh, uh with uh, discretionary spending and uh, mandatory spending and stuff like this the actual description of this live stream i've uh, written as and i'm probably going to change the title uh see where the discussion takes us on how and everything everything unfolds because i have a whole bunch of graphs and charts that i want to show you guys some data and sort of flow of information in a sense where i want to take you somewhere which is going to directly link up to domestic and foreign policy of nations specifically the united states but uh this is what the description of this uh live stream is one of the main aspects of personal finance that everyone must grasp before they can become financially independent is how fiscal and monetary policy of nations will affect their personal investment decisions. In this live stream, let's take a look at some data and discuss energy consumption per capita, money supply, M1, fiscal policy versus monetary policy, or fiscal policy, monetary policy versus discretionary uh a fiscal policy versus monetary policy wall street and stocks and the petrodollar in relation to the state of the economy as well as current events okay that's a mouthful uh because the data is going to take us from one place and we're going to end up somewhere else and it's all linked up okay aside from that while we wait for people to roll in and people have already rolled in i wasn't checking chat because i was reading chaotic reading of that uh, uh description on charter days how are you doing hey chicho hope you're having a great day been looking forward to this yeah me too i was i've been working on a computer fair bit gang uh putting the tables together for uh, the investing in comic books that we're going to do on thursday there's a lot of tables i'm going to dump in the next couple of days i don't know if i'll get a chance to do more today but uh, tomorrow is going to be dedicated to putting all the tables together so we're ready for thursday and of course we're going to do current events tomorrow uh so it should be fun i'm going to take you on a whirlwind today okay sleepy waves how are you doing first one here nice nice water exile hey chicho how are you doing maldras to hello hello have a <laughs> you sure you're laughing at my shirt it's an exclusive uh family member made this the design his his, his name is esteban <laughs> so uk hey dude averaging up my selling position on nasdaq looking forward to hearing your thoughts <laughs> averaging up on the way up on the you, we're gonna take a look at it by the way we're gonna talk take a look at stock market and just so everybody has a really we're not looking at the micro in this live stream we're going to talk or do a little bit of mathematics right we're going to look at the uh, growth rate and return on investment the uh, rate of return whatever however way you want to define it what we talked about yesterday uh, we're going to do a couple of calculations on here but i'm going to take you on a description i'm going to do some pointers and stuff like this x how are you doing hope life is treating you well what's nasdaq nasdaq is basically uh, sort of the platforms like uh, the uh, what do you call it uh, uh, the new york St stock exchange or any other exchange it's an exchange where it's mainly focused on growth companies to a certain degree but those that are in the tech sector okay are we taking a look at the stock market today we are sleepy waves in very general not specific stocks but in general relation to monetary policy in general relation to m1 uh to bitcoin i got a whole bunch of charts and graphs i want to show you okay so when we start talking about 
the petrodollar and uh, the state of the economy these graphs these visuals will be a part of the linkage okay me mean mean engine press how are you doing look for looking forward to this i've been uh hesitating to invest but i'm uh, really thinking about uh starting jr jr it depends what you're thinking about investing in okay the charts today should help you see what's going on uh water exile rest in peace to the one guy who invested in blockbuster during the game stocks <laughs> oh funny and the person who made money off that deal right for every trade there's a buyer and a seller right if one disappears then if sellers disappear skyrocket if buyers disappear crash right it's a fine balance between the two right uh a stable market okay market at 100 tech companies market of 100 tech companies sold uk that's the nasdaq right so it's it's tech it's high growth Te tech is really in general related to high growth right let's look at our why as an example it's number are very interesting right now yeah yeah tilray did you buy in when I recommended when it was at two fifty three dollars? <laughs> By the way, it's a it's a it's a cannabis industry. I recommend the cannabis stocks before the huge spike up and everything like six months ago or so, uh, six three months ago. Cheryl, how are you doing? And Tilray was one of the ones I recommended. Uh, Sleepy Waves, I think it was you that kept on pushing. Which ones? Which ones? I said, okay, look, man, I'll give you a couple of names, and I dropped this one. And at the time, I think it was trading around two fifty three dollars, three fifty. It shot up to sixty seven two days ago, two three days ago, right? Now it's sitting around thirty dollars. Soul UK, big fan of Buffett, <laughs> Harry Dent, and uh, Jeremy Grantham. Uh, if you're thinking about investing now, maybe be careful. If everyone else is talking about it, indeed, yeah. Shout out to dfv dfv i'm not sure what dfv is dfv so gang oh i didn't give you guys my intro i gotta give you guys my speedy gonzalez intro man i'm not sure if notifications have gone out but while we wait we're about eight minutes in um sleepy ways uh chicho did you tell me till why and i was the one who pushed and no i didn't buy like an idiot <laughs> saw the spike up last week but i don't understand why all the cannabis stocks got traction to be honest uh look it's it's a it's a disruptive innovation new industry coming on to play um it's very much behaving in the same way as the internet stocks tech stocks did in the late 1990s early 2000s uh, because people really didn't see the potential growth in it until 10 years 15 years later right uh, so it's a new new thing and it's gonna grow how fast uh, regulations coming in are the stocks worth it you have to look at each individual one DFB was the guy who let the GME oh stock buying <laughs> and testified to Congress oh really he already testified wow 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 I didn't realize he already testified. They already brought him in. Damn. Too bad they didn't look at look this deeply into all the put positions in different times, right? Or call positions that big money does. Uh, maybe even a year ago, some congressmen made, you know, sold all their shares before certain events took place, right? Have they had a congressional hearing on that yet? <laughs> I doubt it. Gang, I am on Patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho chycho if you want to follow this work if you want to know what this work is about which is basically layered on mathematics patreon is a great way to do so i don't put anything beyond paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike for those of you who've been supporting this work on patreon gang thank you for the support it is in large part because of your support that we're able to do this i can do the calculus and see where things are going and roll out things as fast as we can okay
we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in the chat that pops up here twitch is where you want to be at and gang those of you who are supporting this work through twitch participating in these live streams subbing following using bits using points participating in the dis discussion and the mods thank you for the support it is also in large part because of your support that we're able to do this okay i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on parlors back up parlor minds lovk gab and twitter and we do have a discord page where people are sharing a lot of information and you can go to our twitch channel anytime you want type in exclamation mark social and all the links for the social networks will pop up or the announcement size and with a link at the bottom to the discord server that we have where you can share information nice shirt design definitely <laughs> thanks friends <laughs> i have a video up with uh, this graffiti on walls uh, with some dude skateboarding uh that's the family member that came up with the thing right great content here greetings for nice nice malron cara Saras, is that Colombia? Colombia or Ecuador flag? Uh, Marlon, if I, if I remember correctly, is really small. The color scheme is uh, South American, I believe. Right? Ecuador, nice, nice. I was just. <laughs> Bro, sleepy waist. <laughs> Ecuador awesome awesome thank you thank you I should know but Colombia has the same colors no Colombia Colombia is the same colors but it doesn't have that emblem in the middle right Marlon like the artist ah okay I'm from Colombia so I know the difference haha <laughs> same colors but different flag different flag does the Colombian one have a flag in the middle too I can't remember if it does or not Venezuela also got the same Venezuela's also got the same colors dolphin chicho how's it going bro going good man going good no emblem for Colombia flag no emblem for Colombia flag cool 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 doing well look processing lots of data loving it loving it loving it just like a math junkie right for live streams where we don't have any visuals this the audios will be uploaded to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast and those podcasts will be available on or are available on iTunes and Spotify and we will be uploading this live stream to sensor to pitch shoot and rumble it will go on sensor to because we're gonna stay away from politics we're just talking about mathematics data charts and all this jazz so I'm gonna not talk about politics specifically we're gonna hit it up at the end we can't help it it's monetary policy it's very important uh, but we're not gonna hit anything specific so we should be safe on sensor tube uh, but bit shoot and rumble everything goes on there and Odyssey if enough if you have enough points we'll load it up there as well Chicho aside from cannabis and Bitcoin uh, or a hype what else industry are being this uh, disruptive in your opinion there's this disruptive technology kicking in right now uh, platforms more so uh, just a quick because I don't want to really go into specifics feel like the Bitcoin ship long sailed anyway Bitcoin has more leg but it's not going to be giving the multiple returns that you would have had if you bought less than a dollar or less than 50 or less than a hundred right the multiple is not there right it's 50 grand right uh, if it has the same multiple as what it had it would have to go to 500,000 if you bought it a year ago with a 5,000 right so is it gonna to go to 500,000 in a year I doubt it very much okay so the multiple is not there uh, but in regards to uh, disruptive uh, innovation what's going on right now a lot of different platforms are popping up to prevent censorship right so all those platforms that have been censoring up the yin yang there's a slow exodus brewing right so their revenue stream will most likely decrease so it's not a play on the up it's a play on the down right there's decentralization taking place so all those platforms that had a monopoly centralized power over information and communication they might have a hiccup or two so this is more of a downplay 
than an up play right tilray bitcoin cryptos and stuff were the up right markets go both ways up and down know which one you want to ride and do so okay a break from our current topic chicho i really appreciate the new mental health uh tab on the discord ah oh, my pleasure water exile uh it was through recommendation i'm not sure if it was from you or someone else here in the uk we are still under heavy lockdown i lost a family member last year oh it is very good to have places to discuss resources with us man our pleasure uh so i'm, I'm sorry to hear about your uh your loss um difficult difficult oh let me take these guys down again i'm gonna get caught up with the chat and then we're gonna start this uh, shing ding okay just join the discord awesome welcome welcome uh, cheryl sends us some hearts uh, i'm gonna skip anything that's not directed towards me uh, how do you play on the down for fallen tech companies like uh, <laughs> uh i personally used to do puts i don't short uh, I don't do naked shorts or short stocks uh, covered shorts you have to have a position in the company and I don't if I want to short something I'm not gonna have a position in the company that's the way I play it I, I do puts high risk sorry not sure I understand da, 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 da. excellent welcome to the group welcome to the group as Cheryl says press thank you Cheryl lark bark how are you doing HHO good morning good morning good morning gang should we do this let's talk about this okay let me tell you where I'm coming from for this I was in a sort of a, a session with a student and my student uh, asked me about mathematics how you can use mathematics in the real world it's, it's a question that I've, I've had come at me a gazillion times that's why if you do a search if you go to a website math and real life.com It'll go to my website right I set that up like 15 years ago 15 16 years ago where people were asking me my students were keep kept on going where I'm gonna use this in a real world where I'm gonna use this in a, where I'm gonna use math in real life and I just went man you, you guys got to be kidding me right it's like when are you gonna use reading in the real world it's like what are you talking about right so I set up a website called math and life.com and the language of mathematics.com those will go to my sites that I reserved that I've had content there for a while i haven't updated math in real life for a while but we will roll that into play right so how does student ask me you know where we're we going to use math in the real world right graphs not graphs specifically but just math in the real world and there's certain things that i was teaching him right so i decided to go off on a rant so what i've done i brought in some graphs some charts and i'm going to follow the same rant i did right this is after the fact i wrote this up just to make sure we follow the same pattern right i'm going to expand a little bit on some topics because i didn't go too deep with him in things i just wanted to give him a general overview because he's interested in politics economics and uh and just society in general so i wanted to plant a seed for him so he can make the connection from one level to the next level and i'm including a little bit more for you guys okay uh, sleepy waves, Chicho. For those of us new here, can you explain what puts are? Uh, sleepy waves. We'll have to do that on a different time. I want to make sure we get through this data. You can ask us on our Discord page, and I'll definitely let you know what puts are and stuff like this. And we can definitely talk about it during a uh, personal finance where we're talking about the stock market. Uh, we'll go through it. I do have plans to go through that, by the way. Uh, we will, but time permitting right I, I need to take care of a lot of things and I want to make sure we're moving in a way where everybody's on board as to what's going on right I want people to be uh, use this information to become anti-fragile I don't want people to be centralized I don't want people to be dependent on the system that is so destructive to our society because if they're dependent on the system then they'll put their energy their resources their effort their lives towards maintaining the system and i think that's one of the problems with our society is because there are so many people invested in the system that they have no way out so they're working for the system and the system is a perpetual loop that is basically destroying us right so keep this in mind now i'm going to pop up some charts here take a look at this this is one of the graphs that really triggered this discussion that I thought 
we'd start talking about this stuff right now this guy Blair fix is uh, he's coming out of the discipline of uh, Jonathan Nitsan with uh, under his studies one of his students um, that I believe he's finished his PhD or master's or whatever it is but he's doing a lot of work in processing data and if you want to look at some data it's not a bad idea to follow his Twitter feed it's, it presents some nice data and uh, it's fun to look at right and we did uh, we put out a couple of videos on Jonathan Nitsan uh, Jonathan Nitsan's uh, differential accumulation where I had a minor correspondence with him I sent him a video that we did and uh, he replied you know correcting a couple of things I was talking about uh, just using the right terminology and I talk about it in this video if you want to know where this person's tweets are coming from this data is coming from right and I highly recommend following Jonathan Nitsan and if you're into economics looking at what he's presenting okay and specifically under the umbrella of capital as power it's sort of a terminology vocabulary that has entered my psyche that i've been using a lot which is very much uh, a beautiful descriptive phrase about how our society functions right now okay now as for this graph what you're seeing here is the rise and fall of the British Empire as written in relative energy consumption per capita which is fantastic right now this graph you can see the time the years are at the bottom and then um, what does that say relative energy per capita yeah relative energy use per capita and it's pretty intuitive right if you're alive you're a functioning human being <laughs> you're late you're we just started this is the first graph that we're presenting by the way Muhammad so um, I think you'll appreciate this and Muhammad this links up to in the end I hope you can stick around for the two hours this links up to oil petrodollar Iran foreign policy okay now this is energy consumption per capita and it's very much sort of a life cycle right you can see for us human beings as well we consume a lot of energy a lot of energy we have a peak and then we die off and boop, off we go right empires any entity really follows the same model right and this is UK Empire uh, fall of what is it UK energy per uh, use per capita relative to world average right so as the world expanded populations grew and the British Empire collapsed their energy consumption came down pretty intuitive elder God I'm glad you're catching this one you got this one UK Empire right energy consumption per capita in UK Empire relative to its time span really and the peak you know it's got little markers there and stuff like this and in the description of this video i'll probably have links to all not all but most of the images tweets graphs uh websites that we're going to be referencing information for okay 1820 i guess yeah at around there 1900 which was would have been it right now keep this in mind and here's another one this is u.s energy consumption per capita okay so the title for this is the rise and fall of the american empire as written in relative energy consumption per person now i can't say u.s empire has collapsed completely and it's it's pretty much on the downturn there's no doubt about it right industrial revolution sure gina how are you doing right so you can see here that the u.s is has a double top this is something that occurs in the stock market as well right sometimes stocks do double tops right so all these graphs sort of relate to the stock market as well which is pretty cool and keep in mind these both these graphs right keep remember where the one value is one is which is right here oops right here one is here right now one represents the world average from what I understand this graph I didn't dig down too deep but it's more of an intuitive feel for this right and then the US the one is further down right so the US is much higher than the UK right even though it peaked at what is that seven seven times relative to the world now it's down to around four times relative to the world right 
if they're a Chinese graph haha water exile the next one is China indeed we're talking about global politics global economy <laughs> economy and stuff we must include China because that is the rival right this year Iran stock market was like this up 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 up, up down <laughs> what is the definition of unit energy per use it's it's an average right i believe what they did for this is took energy consumption globally took that as the average and then went to each region and calculated that per capita right and whatever that was would be the multiple that you see on the y-axis i believe that's the way they did it that's 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 the way i would have done it right now if you take a look at this this is the graph of china's energy consumption Per capita 1975 year or something and then it's just going through the roof right remember Nixon going to China in the 1970s I believe right early 1970s late 1970s was it mid 19 not late but mid early 1970s late 1960s when when did Nixon go to China right all of a sudden you see this energy consumption go through the roof right keep in mind the one is up here right so that's one for China so china is now energy consumption per capita is more than the world average but keep in mind that the u.s is still much more than the u.s uh, world average u.s is four times the world average and this is you know it's taking everything to consideration right if china is going to eat or not also notice where the one is yeah seoul uk thank you very much for pointing that all right very important however Ch the chinese graph is going like this to turn that around it's not going to flip down right so the Ch china is going like this us is like this where they meet is very crucial right where they meet is very crucial cheryl 1972 nixon went to china and that's going to come into play in another graph that we're going to talk about okay so this is important to keep in mind depending on where you live in the world right here's another graph from the same person okay this graph only goes to yeah i know uh so uk there's uh, we're not going all the way to, to uh, uh 2021 some of the graphs are going to go all the way to 2020 some of the data i'm going to present you know go 10 years ago it, because we're looking at the trend we're not looking at specific time points okay um so it's just the data available to me right the us graph goes to uh 2020 okay so here's the us graph let's do show that again Boop. so us graph is here so if that was 2005 is it 2020 oh ignore me okay <laughs> i thought it was a lot. so check this out here is another graph which i thought was useful okay this is related to the stock market now keep this next graph in mind when we pop up some graph in the stock market right because we're gonna hit something else before the stock market but here is another graph that Blair presented if you want to understand the stock market Bechler and Nitsan and that Jonathan Nitsan and Bechler is the other person that worked with Jonathan Nitsan in uh, differential accumulation pow capitalist power website that they have where they present a lot of information it's if you want to follow economics and world events current events i highly recommend subscribing to that information they are economists they are they are presenting data that you will not find in any other mainstream or even uh, most of the alternative uh, economic mindsets that you're going to look at right so the description of this graph is this if you want to understand the stock market Bechler and Nitsan's power index is a good starting point is the ratio of the S&P 500 to the average US wage the movement of the movement of the power index is revealing and scary we are currently in uncharted waters indeed 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 and you can get a lot of information from this graph or certain types of information from this graph I definitely knew I was yes. Buffett index coming no Buffett index I'm not a fan of Warren Buffett so uh, his is the legacy system his is the system of uh, co-opting government 
and passing regulations in large part, right? So uh, I'm more of a fan of uh, decentralized. Buffett is more a fan of centralized power, right? But take a look at this thing. This is power index one. Uh, basically, the power index is equal to the S&P 500 price divided by average US wage. So what this is saying is that the stock market is the highest it's ever been relative to US wages. So it's basically the US stock market is out of reach of the general citizens of the United States, right? That are living on wages. So there's a couple of ways you can take a look at this or interpret it, or more than a couple of ways you can interpret this. One of the ways you can interpret this is this is a bubble, right? Another way you can interpret this is this is inflation, right? Those are two ways you can look at this, right? Branching off from that corruption, money laundering, uh, theft, uh, trickle up economics, multiple things can relate to that, right? 21st century February, ch -ch -ch. inflation bubble and M2. Ah, Saul, I like the way you think. We're going to look at the M. We're going to look at the M1. We're not looking at the M2. We're going to look at M1, but that's coming up. But before we get into that stuff, so keep this graph in mind as well. I want to pop these guys down because right now we're going to mainly focus on the united states because the united states is a driving mechanism of the world economy based on energy consumption if you want to think about it right energy consumption four times the world average right important important how do you uh, how do you, how do people from low social economic backgrounds learn to tap into these bubbles or is it completely impossible it's water exile it's not completely impossible it's about education it's about understanding the market it's about mathematics right you people need to learn mathematics to be able to take advantage and understand how systems work and decide where they want to be right Kima Wars. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Welcome to our live stream. Now, since we're talking about the United States right now, okay, because we're going to focus on this a little bit because it's connected up with a whole bunch of other things. I'm in Canada. Whatever happens in the United States affects me greatly. Hence, <laughs> I'm focused on the United States, right? Here is now, this is from 2013, gang. Okay, on our Discord page. I linked up a video sort of running through um, US budget okay what the United States is going to be spending uh, and I believe started from 1960s or 1950s and it's a video of this sort of pie chart going through where the um mandatory spending is and discretionary spending is and how much the military spending is i think it was more of the dis uh, um, discretionary spending chart right where it showed the military spending coming down going up right and i'm gonna show you that those guys as well right kimmy wars i really regret that my country countries does not have a stem education system implemented not in my time and no it's everybody's responsibility to educate yourself really gang the centralized education we have a stem rollout in canada and the united states does but the education system is horrendous completely garbage right so it's up to each individual to make sure you're educating yourself if you're depending on the centralized power to educate you they are not going to educate you okay so uk canadian central bank talked about choosing a time and a place to consider blockchain currencies last week yeah so they're trying to eliminate cash in canada and in most of the western world if they eliminate cash in uh, in our countries uh, we're basically serfs we're slaves we have no privacy no anonymity we're we're done for right uh, so and I wouldn't trust the whole the whole point of blockchain technology is to decentralize currency is to decentralize information when governments are coming in saying they want to use blockchain technology to ro roll out the new currencies or whatnot well that's totally centralizing it that that goes against it's like saying 
war is peace right it's total opposite la fatlo tony how are you doing elder god going to throw in some politics a certain cinema chain wants covid passport for entry government responds whatever you want to do <laughs> crazy i feel like i had the free choice to burn me in the work market i really do my best to educate yeah uh, you have to i had to re-educate myself uh many times over okay many times over so this pie chart that we're looking at right mandatory spending is in the dark blue which is what the united states has to spend money on right and that's like we're going to look at the chart here let me show you what uh, mandatory uh here's the breakup of it right so this is basically president proposed total spending for 2013 and this is discretionary spending and interest on debt right so the mandatory spending is medicare and social security mainly right that you see in the bottom pie chart with the dark blue and the yellow and then the discretionary spending is military uh interest food agriculture stuff like this right so what you're seeing here and this is 2013 it 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 pretty much follows the same pattern except for one thing i want to show you this um graph right now so keep this in mind actually before we show this graph let me show you a couple of other pie uh, pie charts so important to remember right what what the united states spends money on a bigger chunk goes towards mandatory spending and a smaller chunk goes towards what they can decide to spend on and then there's a certain chunk there that goes towards interest and the interest is right now interest rates are zero right once interest rates start going up oh my oh my oh my let me take these two guys down and let me pop up these two guys this is the breakdown of the discretionary spending and the mandatory spending for 2013 you guys can take a look at this but the main thing you want to take a look at is the well the mandatory spending huge chunk of it goes to social security and medicare right the rest of it broken down between food and agro and that, that stuff the discretionary spending is what they can make a decision on to spend on basically more than 50 percent is going to military and then you got education there government housing all that jazz right so more of it goes to military i'm just going to get caught up with chat i'm going to keep this graph up there for a second okay these pie charts larkberg yeah i'm very disappointed in our u.s education we're supposed to be the richest and the most powerful country yet the u.s can't provide something simple as food education health shelter and the environment thank you for, um yeah larkberg crazy thank you for existing i'm adoring you and the content you're providing congrats for the work. my pleasure and thank you for being here saul uh compared to the rest of the world it clearly is doing uh really well so what what do you compare to what do you compare to right i think the only comparison that you can really do is is got to be relativistic and you got to compare it to yourself as well <laughs> laugh out loud tony redeeming points thousand 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 four thousand five hundred <laughs> awesome all the god says stop that laugh out loud tony at some point we're going to do auctions and give stuff away right uh you, you can bid on that pie chart will need to be bigger for biden haha <laughs> now take a look at this remember this discretionary spending and mandatory spending and i'm going to pop out this chart again this pie chart mandatory spending discretionary spending right and here's a graph what's happened is mandatory spending there's a deviation for until mid 1980s right mid 1980s discretionary spending and mandatory spending they're pretty much shadowing each other in the mid 1980s when certain political mindsets took place in the united states you're seeing a deviation right let me come up here so you see and that's continuing and right now at the end whoop, mandatory spending is going like this discretionary spending is going like this right so there's a huge break here so what you are seeing in the what this means in the above pie chart is mandatory spending is going to take a bigger chunk of the u.s spending right important 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 let's take this down let's take both of these guys down now 
what is spending well you need the money to spend right where do you get the money the united states gets this money through taxing uh do they tax corporations anymore <laughs> right but basically payroll tax and personal tax and this is food sales oil tax oh they get all their money from there right but somewhere they generate the money right i thought i have to redeem them to use it in auction uh, you do but you haven't you haven't when you bid on something then we ask you to uh redeem the points and then i supply so what the what just happened to my but i they go into never never now but what i can do to laugh out loud tony i'm going to re remind me on discord i'll reimburse you these redeem points i will reject them when i reject them they come back to you and then during the auction you can uh use them up you'll reserve them can i have them back <laughs> I love, I love Tony. just remind me in discord remind me in discord to do this okay remind me in discord to do this okay hold your points gang at some point we're gonna do auction and give things away again okay i'm thinking about doing multiple versions of these things now money supply okay the federal reserve of the united states which isn't really of the united states as a private organization in collaboration with government with centralized banks right federal reserve banks getting together deciding on the money uh, monetary policy right how much money they're going to make available and whatnot here's the m1 data we're going to do a little mathematics on this after we finish these graphs because I want to pop these up. I just want to make sure we're not going over time. Okay, cool. This is M1 data. M1 data, let me read you the description, just one paragraph. Well, thank you. My pleasure, love. But make sure you remind me, please. I need some honey this time. All the God says. This is so suspicious. Check this out. What is M1 data? Here's just one paragraph that I'm quoting from an article that I wrote many, many moons ago okay i wrote this like many many moons ago i'm going to link it up in the description of this video this is from archive.org my previous website and if you go to uh, and the title of this article was 11 of the most important economic events of the last 11 years collapsing the economy in the build-up to world war three and if you go to point number five it says year 2006 discontinuous of m3 and m3 is big money that the federal reserve was uh making available and they had to debs how are you doing they they had to announce how much money they're making available but they discontinued the m3 so we knew something was up and we're going to look at graphs that are going to explain to us what was up right but here's a little quote from another article that i took which explains what m1 m2 and m3 are m1 is the most volatile equivalent to cash on the loose m2 is less volatile equivalent to savings accounts deposits m3 is least volatile equivalent to rich folks money uh, which they park right so m1 is how much money was made available by the federal reserve this graph that you see here this is how much money was made available by the federal reserve since this i believe goes all the way back to 1970s right 1970s okay see the the graph is i'm going to point through this this is this graph is going up going up going up going up going pretty nice you know it's got a nice incline like this i guess and then the 1990s it flattens okay flattens in 2000 there was issues 2000 is over here right in the 2000 and bubble we're over here and they made they increased the money supply so you see the graph kick up a little bit the slope and then in the 2008 collapse the scam right the money theft money laundering over here they pumped right they released a few trillions of dollars into the markets made available and basically what happened was when uh if you're part of uh the group if you have hookups to the people who are releasing this money they called it qe yeah yeah qe was supposed to be uh paid back turns out they hey let's keep printing cash let's keep printing cash and 
a lot of us talked about this back then i was writing a lot of articles saying look man this is disaster right and i wrote an i even wrote an article back then in mid 2000s uh 2007 2008 2006 saying that food prices are about to double in the next seven years right and pretty much in the next seven years seven eight nine years food prices double people are like saying, what are you talking about chicho well money supply just went through the roof man right and what really happened was lot, trillions of dollars were given to wall street and people who were hooked up and joe blow me and you lost our homes lost our jobs and the middle class got knocked off a little bit right so there's less middle class in there was less middle class um in let's say 2015 then there, there were in 2007 right the middle class got knocked off they got trimmed by around um, some of the estimates i was reading anywhere between 15 to 20 percent of the middle class went down to the lower class right and one of the reasons was because of the money supply the money supply went trillions of dollars would put into the market uh citibank became part of the obama administration they bought back stocks they bought back property inflation hit went through the roof they don't call it inflation but that's what it was inflation right because the money supply went through the roof right now before we get on to the next peak let me just catch up with uh, uh this thing uh mixy chicho this is really interesting awesome i'm glad you're enjoying it q is just counterfeiting money bad money drives out good and the stuff related to q is insane right um we can't get into it in this stream maybe we'll get into it in another stream right just know that money supply went through the roof went through the, now this was going through the roof wow look at that steep curve see that incline there at the end see that thing there that's how much money was made available in the last year right let's zoom into this thing here's the 10-year chart of the same thing right now the 10-year chart starts off when 2021 2011 so we're already in the over here <laughs> let me take this down so i wish i had a pointer in this thing so we're already over here right during this steep curve now this steep curve is pretty steep relative to the curves before that right but if you zoom in right it doesn't look that bad but holy crap look at the last year that's that's like this it's it's like going going like this and then poof right got that let's zoom in a little bit more here's a five-year version of it Boop. that's a five-year version oh snap right what's going on what's going on Here's the one year version. One year version doesn't look that bad, right? Because this is related to something that we talked about in personal finance playlist that we had, right? Where I mentioned, I put out a video saying specifically, time matters. Everything's a fractal. It's all relativistic, right? And if you go to our personal finance video, um, a playlist, you'll find that video. I don't have it uh, linked up right now, unfortunately. So I can't give it to you right now. But basically it's talking about if, you, if you're in a market, right? Whatever market you may be in, over an extended period of time, you might see the graph, like the top graph. Holy camoles, look at that movement. But if you bought in, you entered the market here, here, right? It doesn't look that bad so it's really relativistic how long you've been in the market what market you're trying to enter in and what's going on with that market okay keep this in mind keep this in mind because we're about to look at the stock market okay yeah that's what's pumping that yeah yeah we're gonna get into that so awesome awesome uh real mc mike how are you doing that's why people got to learn cryptocurrencies other than bitcoin so that, that you can protect your money going to zero from the hyper information about to come start looking into bitcoin cash monero ripple etc bitcoin is uh somewhat comprised already by wall street also see uh, indeed uh th there's no doubt that uh, bitcoin is very centralized and by the way gang you don't necessarily have to be in cryptos you can be in any other assets that you want to be right as we're going to talk about on thursday i have decided to be in the collectibles market the collectibles market has seen tremendous growth over the last 20 years okay tremendous growth over the last 20 years because of inflation really because this is inflation this is 
money supply turn on the top right and we're gonna do a little bit of numbers here um, crunch these numbers let me take these guys down now and by the way the peak that you see here way at the end there 40% of the total money supply m1 categorized as an m1 was created in the last year since the inception 40% was created in the last year what the should we do a little mathematics let's do a little mathematics on this here let's do a little mathematics on this keep that graph in mind right here's the graph might as well because this is important this is the graph right here is let's say 1970 here is let's put on our markers right 1970 you know, 70 80 90 2000 2010 2020 so 1980 1990 2000 2010 2020 okay by curiosity uh camera says Chicho, how do you feel regarding minimum wage i mean i believe it locks the current uh, country's growth on the same stage even if they each year raise one or almost three uh, minimum wages we can talk about it because there are intricacies involved with that right as you saw the stock market s p this graph here where is it was it this one no not this one oh here we go this one as you see here relative to us minimum wage the s p is on unprecedented levels that means it's out of reach right so with monetary policy being this m1 right with monetary policy being that floodgates being opened up by the federal reserve just flooding the markets with money that money is not making it to the citizenry right it's not making it to the general joe blow to main street it's making it to wall street because those trillions of dollars and this is trillions upon trillions of dollars that it just released opened up the gate what that's done is gone into the stock market huge chunk of it right the s p price going through the roof and this started with uh, obama in 2008 right and right now in the last year it's gone into overdrive that money has gone to the s p so what you're seeing is people's wages haven't gone up but the market's gone up because the money being made available is going to buy stocks and property and collectibles and other things right no i didn't say that there's no educator okay the graph makes me feel <laughs> look up will precious metals uh, save me um will protect you i wouldn't say save you will decrease the hit right now take a look at this graph i'm just going to recreate it here right so up to 19 1980s uh, 1990 okay so we got this guy let me just do a general right so around here and around so basically a graph goes like this and then it went like this for a while in the 1990s right and then in 2000 it got a little boost and then in 2008 it got a little boost right and then in 2020 it went here right that's basically a graph that we saw right if you want here you go let's pop that in again right now this number here is four trillion this number here is seven trillion this is just in the last year one year okay one year 70 t so return on investment inflation rate of return let's do the calculation we talked about this right present value value minus previous value value divided by previous value and 
you can rename these anything you want depending on whatever the, it is you're looking for this basically means present value seven trillion seven t you know we'll just put seven minus four we're going to compare it to this point here we're not even going back to 2000 we're, we're comparing it to here okay divided by previous four this becomes three over four which is equal to 0 0.75 which is equal to 75 percent right so 75 percent of relative to the four trillion that was available 75 percent more funds more money liquidity was entered into the markets right so relative to where we were which is four trillion right 75 percent was added of the four trillion was added into the markets okay in the last year here's another way you can look at it okay you can go compare it to the seven trillion how much what percent of the seven trillion dollars is new money that was generated in the last year so again present 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 value minus oh hold on let me do it this way or you can think about it this way right we want to do a comparison to find out what this how much this is relative to seven right and that's three right so you can go seven minus four divided by not four by the total seven so that's three over seven which is equal to 43 what is it 43 percent or something 43 percent 43 percent so these are the two numbers two percentages you want to think about right 75 percent additional funds were made available a year ago okay in the last year relative to four trillion dollars that were pumped into the markets right and relative to where we are right now which is seven trillion dollars 43 percent of the seven trillion dollars was made available this year okay in one year wow 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 right we got that let's look take a look at the dow jones here's the dow jones right let me bring up m1 again m1 see a similarity there something's going on the time frames are a little different right the 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 graph that you see here goes into 1990 right so 1990 was the flat curve here but the dow is doing this let me bring this up right nasdaq is even better <laughs> nasdaq is even better graph. i stuck with the dow right just because people talk about the dow 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 right uh because dow is a lot of legacy companies as well that basically there should be they're insolvent a lot of them they should be bankrupt but they're being still popped up right it's crazy right but what we're seeing here is this peak that you see what is it uh, da, 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 1996 um oh it's really hard to put it on here i, I get distracted with it. america's afraid and they should be the chinese are coming uh, but i think uh, in the united states the problem is uh, the natives are restless the american population is restless and rightfully so because they're being robbed right and they're afraid indeed they are afraid there's no doubt about it right so what we're seeing here uh, here is this 2008 here let's assume here i don't even i don't even know for for the dow jones we're going to go from it's going from zero but it's, it's not zero 1970s okay let's say zero which is not zero up to forty thousand really 
not 40,000. Where, where are we at? We're at 31,000. So let's assume the peak here. Let's make this here. We'll put it here as well. So this is 30,000. 30K. This is going to be 15K. This is going to be uh, 15K. Uh, 10, 5, 0, uh, 20, 25, right? So 5K, 10K, uh, 20K, 25K. Okay. Apologies because it's really messy, but we're trying to get a feel for it, right? And let me take these graphs down. So up to mid 1990s, I'm just going to put little markers here. We're sitting at 10,000, right? In 2000, it went up to like 15,000 and then it did a little flopped out to 7,000. I know that market well. And then it went up to, um, by 2016, it was at 20,000. So 2016 is 20,000. So I'm just going to draw this very general. In, the 19, in here is the kick up. Okay. So let me take these down. Chicho, rule one. To get people together you need an enemy yeah real or unreal some people will say invisible little ones <laughs> so here is the stock market right this is 1990s going up 2000 bubble crash the tech stocks it didn't go down to five it went down to around seven okay uh, and then goes up to this is 2008 right oh no sorry not 2008 uh, 2000 well the graph should be a little bit better I'm sorry I'm sorry if I'm sort of killing it a little bit <laughs> and then we went up to here this is 2016 2019 we're around here uh, and then uh, it was 20,000, 2018, and then it went up to 29,000, and then it dropped down to 18,000, and now it's on here. Okay. Do you follow? I sort of brutalized this, but basically this is what happened. In mid-1980s, the stock market started going up. In the 19... Not not as sharp as the 1990s. 1990s was sharper, so this should be like around here. 1990s was sharper. In 2000, we had a downturn. It went up 2008, okay, and then did another crash. I should have the other crash here. I can't remember if it went up. Yeah, there was another serious crash, and then it went up, and then went up. And basically, in uh, 19... 2019 or so it was sitting at 29,000 and in a matter of a week in a matter of a week okay it dropped 30 percent okay it went from around 29,000 down to around 18,000 okay at the beginning of 2000 uh 2020 in a matter of a week to two weeks it dropped 30 percent right and then what happened it went from 18,000 right now sitting around 31,000 right in one year in one year March 2020 has some of the biggest one-day drops in market history yes yeah, so right so in a matter of a week it dropped 30 percent right now if we're going to do the calculation let's do the calculation right how much did the stock market drop if we're going to do this in red let's do this in red it went from 29,000 down to 18,000 so 18,000 minus 29,000 divided by 29,000 right let's punch this in let me bring out my calculator so 18 oops clear clear 18 minus 29 a 18 minus 29 these calculators minus i just should, should put 11 but i'm not is equal to 11 and then divided by 29 
it dropped 38 percent basically right it's more like 33 percent or something but 30 let's go 35 percent negative drop right now keep this in mind keep this in mind here's m1 right what happened when that occurred with the 35 percent drop the man the legend smith way down here the federal reserve opens up the tap releases trillions of dollars into the markets trillions of dollars into the markets free money free money right the market goes from 18,000 to 31,000 31 minus 18 divided by 18 now we're dividing by 18 because that's what we started off at this one we're dividing by 21 because we're 29 we dropped so it's negative 18 31 minus 18 31 minus 18 is 13 divided by 18 72 percent increase what the hell 72 percent that's insanity that's insanity right where'd that money come from to kick up the dow jones 72 percent return in a matter of one year that's debt on future generations that in my definition is not only inflation it's corruption right will something break possibly now that's the Dow right let's take a look at Bitcoin here's Bitcoin this is about a 10-year chart right about a 10-year chart it's nine years or so okay and just because you had a security blanket doesn't mean each person had that kind of investment indeed right people are talking with each other this is good good this is education mama says this is bitcoin right now one of the reasons cryptocurrencies blockchain technology came to be was because people looked at what happened in the 2008 scam theft that occurred right and people realized that when central power can do this right their money means shit right Lark bar, yeah, this is the real Chicho. All the God says, the charts are back. The charts are back, brother. <laughs> it's great education, show. My pleasure, man. I'm glad you guys are liking it, right? So one reason blockchain technology came to be specifically Bitcoin. If you read the white papers, right, that came out, it was basically disruptive innovation kicking in as a necessity to save people's wealth, right, labor to save people's capital because when central bank central power can flood the market like no one would have even even imagined right in the mainstream media mainstream corporate propagandists and economic economists would have imagined that the graph that's this slope during the obama administration when they flood the markets in 2008 with trillions of dollars of funds going to wall street and the big banks and the big players right no one would have imagined that when this took this took 12 years to unfold right 2008 to 2020 12 years that in one year the graph would look like this right 
Well, I shouldn't say no one imagined it. People who created cryptocurrencies did. People like me who were writing about it in the mid 2000s did, right? There were many people who did, but they didn't have a voice in the corporate propagandist machine to warn people that something nasty is coming our way. It's a storm, get ready, okay? so this is the bottom is the bitcoin graph for about nine years right this this one is a five-year chart for some reason i couldn't get up to 10 years this is a five-year chart right and again should have would have could have right should have been listening to our crypto videos we were putting out five years ago and whatnot and here's the one year chart now the one year doesn't look as dramatic as this one but neither does the m1 people freak out right they go oh look at the corner this is but you but you all right but then hey wait a second look at m1 but you but you all right what's going on here there is a linkage taking place here you could call it inflation you could call it protection you could call it people jumping on a different system and jumping off a previous system right possibly there's a lot of ways you can interpret this there's money laundering going on indeed and then here's the one-year chart which doesn't look that bad right relative to a stock market have you seen tesla's stock have you seen tilray have you seen some of the other stocks how they're behaving bitcoin isn't behaving that much differently however your returns are pretty damn good right so for example there's a stock out there called let me take these guys down and let me take m1 down too okay let me just get rid of this down here right so if we're going to look at bitcoin bitcoin a year ago was around five thousand right right now it's around 50,000 49,000 right lurk where hey chicho this kind of old news but how do you feel about the whole Wall Street and GameStop debacle I put out a video on that uh, lark take a look at it uh, we sort of said it's a game be careful be quick on the trigger it would I, I mentioned that when it was around 200 or something it was probably gonna or 300 was gonna probably pop to around 500 and then come down and that's probably basically what it did it went up to 490 and it's down to 50 dollars now right at that levels if you could short if you were big money you were probably shorting the crap out of it right it's it's a game right it's a, it's a game right now it's a trader's market right but here's the price of bitcoin here's what bitcoin has done right now its price is forty nine thousand. a year ago you could have bought it at five thousand and this is going to be your return which is going to be 44,000 44,000 over 5,000 45 divided by 5 is 9 right so this is a 900 percent return right stock market in the same year gave you 72 percent return Bitcoin gave you 900 percent return right okay this is Bitcoin many other cryptos behaved similarly some better right there are certain stocks that did better Tilray went from when when I was recommending it right just to you know there's a lot of stock it's, it's it's not an investment anything but just mentioning that oh certain things might be doing moves which are cannabis stocks right right Tilray two days ago hit sixty seven dollars we mentioned it might be a great time to buy when it was at three dollars 67 minus 3 64 over 3 21 and a third but let's call it 21 this would have given you 2100 percent return Tesla 
10 years ago, it was $5 before, after the split. Right now it's 800, so 800 minus five over five. Did, who wants to do that? 700, 795 over five. What, what is that? I love charts and graph Chicho's dreams. Do, it's not a Tilray is not 67 anymore. It's now at 30. And I don't recommend this is not financial advice. Do not recommend buying. Okay. 159. 159. 15900 percent. Holy moly. Right? Holy moly. Do I recommend buying? No. But this is not financial advice. We're not talking finance here. <laughs> right? So, what is this all about? What is this all about? Right? Saul UK Chicho. It's probably worth emphasizing that all of this is euphoric silliness reaching a turn. Saul UK 100% agree however it has a lot to do it has a lot to do with the money supply with this let's bring out green it has a lot to do with this it has a lot to do with that let's make it blue maybe blue turns out better blue it has a lot to do with this right when when what was it 75 percent more additional liquid money is pumped into the system things are gonna blow up right now keep this in mind okay i want to take all this down this is this chart here by the way this happened in many other countries but i don't think they were as dramatic as this not in the western countries anyway i don't think 43 percent of the total money supply liquid money supply in canada was created in the last year in the united states as was right and that puts a burden on the US petrodollar right or the US dollar right then let me see Chicho gang I sent a link I don't, know, I don't know what that says but I'm gonna send the link to discord page general I came across it last night and I thought it was important. okay awesome you're wrong just watch your <laughs> yeah Iran is another game as well I, I mentioned Western world uh, to pass you yeah just western world other countries yeah for sure for sure right but here's here's since muhammad mentioned iran here let's talk about the u.s right india had uh, already had a bit of related uh, uh correction yeah now take a look at this thing let's assume they're very sensitive to us they're very sensitive <laughs> right now M1 is US currency being made available, right? So let's assume we're the United States. We have the money, right? We're in control of the money supply. How do you feel about the future of... I don't know what that is. Simple Tron 2000. Now, one thing that the united states uh, has as a buffer within the <laughs> beyond the mouth of infants forever <laughs> so that's, that's, now one of the one of the things that united states depends on right that basically is one of the variables that it uses and it's in it's in its calculus of um 
its monetary supply, its domestic policy, its foreign policy, its behavior, right? Is that the US dollar is the world's reserve currency, right? So the world's reserve currency means that US dollar is basically accepted anywhere in the world uh, as a means of conducting trade, right? And that has been the case since after World War II, really. Okay, since the early 19th century, 20th century, 1900s, right? So the United States has had the pleasure of having the world's reserve currency for a number of decades. And the obligation that the United States has had is to not use the US currency as a weapon, right? And to be fiscally responsible. And at, at, at a point, you could have exchanged US dollars for gold bullion, but Franklin D. Roosevelt killed that off in the 19 in 1933 in the build-up to World War II, and Nixon completely decoupled the US dollar uh, from the gold standard in the early 1970s in 1971, I believe. Okay. So the US dollar, which became the world's reserve currency at the beginning, had the the backing of the gold standard so there was weight to the u.s dollar so if you had a hundred dollars in u.s funds you could have gone and exchanged that up to 1933 to gold bullion in the banks franklin d roosevelt took that off and if you're a foreign nation that had u.s reserves currency you could have gone to the u.s government and said hey we want gold back for that now Nixon came along and everyone knew that that wasn't going to happen but Nixon made it official in early 1970s saying that listen we're not going to redeem the US dollar for gold bullion anymore and we don't have enough gold to cover the US dollar the value of the US dollar so other countries outside the United States went well what the hey right why should we hold the US dollar why should the US dollar be the world's reserve currency right why if you're this country or 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 this country why should you hold US dollars in your reserve banks in your reserve right why should you do business among each other with US dollars only right what why not trade between each other using your own currencies or another reserve currency because this thing is no longer backed by gold right it's backed by nothing and when a country when a country can do this print as much money as it wants then the reserve currency, the value of that money, right? That's not money, it's currency, right? Is depreciating over time, right? Well, the United States had to figure something out. USA had to figure something out because the natives were getting restless, right? So, Chicho, not sure if you're going to cover it in this stream but you have uh, to look at the CCP these M1 printing it totally eclipses the US <laughs> yeah uh, the US US money uh, purchasing power has decreased like 99% over the last hundred years right and uh, Saul we we put out a uh, 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 you, you have to look at the CCP uh, the M1 printing it totally eclipses yeah like uh, Saul I haven't looked at it uh, tell you the truth but to me the way they manage their finances doesn't affect me or us in the Western world as much as how the United States um, deals with its finances because the US is the world's reserve currency and agreed the bubble is all over the place right the money printing is insane and Saul if you have a good link for that uh, for the Chinese Communist Party I'm assuming CCP that's what you're referring to um, if you have a good link for us uh, link it up in our discord okay that'd be amazing 
Are you seeing more streaming points today? Uh, Chicho, yeah, they've been printing money for the last 10 years holding USD while putting out yen. Yeah, they're trying to devalue the yen, right? The reason they're trying to devalue it because they want to stay the manufacturing capital of the world. They want they want it to be cheap for industry to come there to make things, right? Because they can't afford to decouple themselves from that industry, not yet anyway. That, that's the direction they're going. They don't want to be so dependent on foreign industry to make stuff in China. And they're, they're trying to uh, turn back some of the environmental damage they've done. I don't think they're, they're, they're really doing it, but uh, that's what they're uh, pretending, or maybe they are, right? But they built a lot as well right so they're trying to keep the it's sort of currency by the way this stuff that you see here is also currency wars as well it's just me and you joe blow are not involved in these currency wars so we're the civilians being hurt in this right so what happens here is this take a look the us dollar used to be gold back it was a reserve currency of the world and US dollar decoupled itself from the gold standard so it these people can't redeem the US currency for gold bullion but they still want the US still wants the world to be using the US dollar because it gives US power it, end of story because the United States is the only country that is allowed to print US dollars so they control the money supply to the world right it's like you being a farmer that you control the food supply to the world right so if you and by the way keep this in mind if you want to control the food supply of the world what do you need to do you don't need to control the whole food supply in the world you just need to control protein okay keep that in mind and water of course okay so the u.s has to think something out here's what they do what does the world run on right let's go back let's go back let's go back Let's go back. What does the world run on? Boom. 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 Energy. Energy, energy, energy. Energy consumption. Energy makes the world go round, right? Energy, oxygen, water, exhaust is what? Oxygen and water as well. But world economy. World economy is run on energy. The cheaper the energy the faster it churns right the more expensive the energy the economy comes to a grinding halt right so the United States goes yeah energy <laughs> and the United States goes okay we're not gonna these people are restless because we can't give them gold for the US dollars but we're gonna lock them in that they have to use the US dollar right in trade how how are they gonna lock them in enter the house of Saud Saudi oh my god I'm spelling Saudi wrong Saudi Arabia anyway Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia okay the United States in the 1970s early 1970s there was the oil sort of hiccup there where people were lined up in the united states on um, to get oil because opec because saudi Arabia really controls opec or so controlled more of opec back then did just not in the same quantity it's just not in the same quantity yeah there was sort of a oil issue there right because saudi arabia said hey we're gonna cut off the tiles we're gonna do this we're gonna kick up the price do this do this do this all of a sudden there was energy shortages right well, the United States comes to Saudi Arabia and says, listen, you better stop this nonsense or you're going to get spanked. And the other thing they said, we need the world to use, use the U.S. dollar. Okay, so we'll give you backing. We'll protect the house of Saud. Okay, we'll make sure you stay in power, the dictators in Saudi Arabia. The thing you need to do is do exactly as we say whenever we say it okay the other thing you need to do right away is sell oil only in US dollars 
right? Only in US dollars. All the countries that need to buy oil from Saudi Arabia will need US dollars to buy oil from Saudi Arabia plus some of the other dictatorial powers in the uh, Middle East, right? The kingdoms, all the little guys that are put in place like Kuwait and, and all that jazz, right? So in the 1970s, the United States comes and cuts a deal and there were others as well, right? There was Iraq. Huh? Iraq was a US puppet, right? They were only selling oil in US dollars, right? Like, if you remember, Saddam Hussein was put in power by the CIA to overthrow a democratically elected government in Iraq to be installed as a dictator because no democracy in the Middle East, right? Still a better deal than Putin offering and all the guys to sell to Putin end up in the Serbia lake. Right. So Iraq was also part of this whole deal. So all these people needed US dollars to buy oil. Right. That's how the United States was able to stay as a world reserve currency because they cut a deal with all these different houses right or dictators or puppets they put in power that these people could only sell oil in US dollars right and United States is happy as apple pie and they can do this right print as much money as they want as much as they want right really as fast as they want look at look at the chart wow the last year holy schmoles right 43% of the total money supply in the world and in the United States that was produced through the Fed was created in the last year. 75% additional liquidity was entered into the market relative to where it was in the last year, right? Well, all is well for the US dollar as long as the world can only conduct business in US dollars the petrodollar right because why because they need to buy oil right energy makes the world go around right now here's a hiccup what happens if some of these nations that only sold the US sold oil in US dollars come out and say mm, well, we're gonna accept other currencies because because we don't trust you guys you guys are printing money up the yin yang and we really can't do anything we got enough US dollars we've bought hotels and airlines and all this jazz is devaluing right and our oil is decreasing right so their supply of oil is decreasing but the money they're being paid with the currency they're being paid with is also devaluing so they wanted to diversify one of the countries that wanted to diversify was iraq they said we're willing to accept other currencies this was in the late 1990s or 2000 i believe saddam hussein came out and said you know what it's not just the us dollar you can also use the euro to buy oil from iraq All right well, if this happens, then there's pressure on the US dollar and the US dollar is losing its reserve standing, right? And it wasn't just Iraq that said they were gonna do trade outside of the US dollar. There were a handful of other countries said it as well. see a pattern there Iraq Iran Venezuela Libya all of them came out and said we're willing to trade outside 
of the US dollar. Iran were as, went as far as creating an oil bruise where people could trade oil outside of the US dollar. Wow. Snap, crackle, pop. What the hell? Not happy, happy USA, right? Because 30 years ago, US dollars were the only reserve currency, and they're, they're, they are the only reserve currency, but they, mo what was it? I believe like more than 90% of the trade in the world 20 years ago was done in US dollars. Right now it's down to around 80% if I remember my numbers correctly. So what's going on right now is more countries are doing trade outside of the US dollar, right? And that's putting pressure on the US dollar, right? Because they don't need to hold US dollars anymore. They can hold other currencies, right? And there's basket of currencies, SDR and stuff like this, but we won't get into that, right? There's other currencies. There are people doing trade between each other in their own currencies, Russia and China being one, right? So they're decoupling themselves from the US currency, right? Lark Park, have you heard the latest from RT, US Secretary Building Airport in Syria near oil? Uh, the US secretly, but yeah, it's crazy, man, right? And Syria, by the way. Oh, we forgot one of the main ones Syria, right? Do you believe the Obama Democrat um, water exile aspirations for closer trade alliances to the EU have something to do with preserving the integrity? A, a lot of things have to do with inter, uh, maintaining the integrity of the US dollar, right? Because right now, the US is sitting there, and 20 years ago, when Iraq, Iran, Venezuela said they're going to decouple from the US dollar the united states said well we need to do something about that what were the choices you as an individual right if you had a business and a lot of the people that you were dealing with refused to buy your product what would you do what would you do you could make them a better deal when i talked to one of my students about this the student was talking about I asked him what would you do and his his reply was well you give them a better deal what if these people aren't willing to accept the better deal what would you do I said you would give them a better deal right he said okay the US offers them a better deal they refuse what do you do what do you do especially what do you do especially if more than 50% of your discretionary spending is spent on the military what would you do elder god give them freedom exactly right put an embargo on iran economic embargo no trade on the swift system you can't do trade big there's lots of issues there right venezuela embargo annihilate libya off the face of the map right they wanted to bring a gold standard african currency right 10 years ago libya had the highest standard of living in the in all of africa highest standard of living in all of africa the united states the uk with this nato allies including canada wiped it off the face of the earth right how so it's still there but there's slave open slave markets right annihilate libya in 2000 saddam hussein said no more us dollars we're doing oil in euros what do you do invade them annihilate them take it over if you can right what does that do well these people that needed oil from iraq they had euros they wanted to buy it uh, they can't they need to get us dollars again right they can't buy oil from iran because there's a whole embargo on it with banking systems or venezuela oops 
Well, Libya, or they're producing oil, but the EU, uh, France, is just taking it, right? What are, what are they doing in Syria? What are they doing in Syria? Well, Trump boy said it. Occupy their oil fields and take their oil. That's exactly what they did, right? What did the new administration do? Biden, first thing they announced, one of the first things they announced in the first week, we're increasing the troops in Syria. We're going to occupy their oil fields and take their oil. All of that is related to this. 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 What we need to do as individuals to make ourselves anti-fragile is decouple ourselves from this system. It is ridiculously important to decouple yourself from this system. <laughs> A lark bark decouple yourself from the system and there is ways you can do it and we've talked about it in our personal finance videos it is extremely important to educate yourself to make sure you have multiple sources of revenue that you're not invested in this current economic system all your eggs anyway slick mick thank you very much for the tier one sub they've subscribed for five months currently on a two-month streak you slick make thank you by the way gang sorry if I'm, i didn't catch some of the uh chat just because i wanted to stay focused make sure i got the point across here what's going on okay the marcus is a bad joke drop not the first sign of trouble decouple from uh, trade finance and enter into the decentralized finance indeed right deck man how are you doing i like your shirt thank you what is it his name is esteban it's uh it's sort of like one of a kind my nephew uh drew this and uh, we put it on a t-shirt or he put it on a t-shirt and i zapped it uh he has a here let me give you his uh, uh his thing dun, 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 dun. where is it oh i have it on the other computer pooper scooper Oh no, I have it here. There you go. Here's his artwork if you want to follow his work. It's beautiful artwork, by the way. Okay. That's his Instagram page. Lots of ladies. Lots of ladies. <laughs> and he has stickers and stuff that he sells. So you can go to his thing and he's got stickers of beautiful ladies that you can put all over the place and I'm pretty sure he's got he's got shirts as well with some of his designs I don't know if he's got Esteban but he's got some of the ladies on there this is great engineer press awesome uh, here's what you do folks if you are holding crypto assets take your assets deposit it into it Ave take a uh, stable coin loan you still going to you i don't know about that man uh, so sol uk no mention on the iranian r i r g c rocking around iraq and syria yeah for sure for reference u.s tried to teach the iraqi army to protect democracy <laughs> just rolled over them and here's the kicker sol uk iraq had democracy in the 1960s there was a democratically elected government put into place in Iraq 
the United States CIA brought in Saddam Hussein to assassinate the president and put him in power he failed the first time they put Saddam Hussein in jail or no he he he, he got he, he got taken out of Iraq he was living outside of Iraq and then they brought him in he killed the democratically elected president took power and then annihilated anybody else that was in opposition to him Iraq had democracy it was like Iran in 1953 right or 1950s with Mohammad Mossadegh Iran had democracy but Iran had the audacity with their democratic leadership to say hey we're gonna nationalize the Iranian oil the UK and the US came in and did a coup and put in the Shah so a lot of Middle Eastern countries already had democracy unfortunately the Western powers could not stand their democracy that's the kicker right lots of ladies okay I'm interested awesome Lark Park slick McChicho when you say not to invest in these systems is this uh, deterring from uh, investing in stocks or do you just mean from investing in the system you're talking about uh, currently sorry uh, just investing in the system look if you're putting your heart and soul in maintaining a corporation which is destroying humanity try to divest from it right try to find another source of revenue that isn't about ruining destroying future generations if you have all your money in the stock market right now pull that out not not all of it if you don't want to pull all of it out but if you're riding the stock market hoping that you're gonna have enough money and that money is gonna have enough buying power to see you through your retirement you you got to be kidding me right if you if you have all your money in a bank and you're not divested in a in in, in a way where if there's hiccups in the economy you become less anti-fragile if you're not if you're not divested in let's say you know multiple ways you can do it if you're not growing your own food you can be in a little bit of precious metals you can be in a little bit of cryptocurrencies you can build your communities we've talked a lot about this in our personal finance videos uh slick mick uh really important videos i took a lot of time to put those together because it was sort of my heart and soul and me trying to explain things as best as i could to get the point across that the system that we're functioning on right now is in serious trouble okay is in serious trouble what is a ooh, la la <laughs> you like that art real mc my hey chicho what would you recommend students such as myself who don't have a lot of time but want alternate ways of earning income and decoupling from the system mc mike look one of the things i did i i started t teaching math tutoring math right i took an ad in the paper at the time you couldn't you didn't really advertise online there was no online in the 1990s right and i wanted to re relearn my mathematics and i made a little money on the cash and i it, it wasn't it wasn't really that much money i was doing it using the students just to remind me of how to do mathematics by doing that i was able to uh, build up my portfolio to a level where i could actually enter full-blown teaching mathematics right so what i recommend is build up your your power just like playing a video game right sometimes you need to go down this this level and go find that hidden door where you can acquire this magic potion and then you have that magic potion for the rest of your game right life is the same way sometimes you need to put a little effort in right that goes outside of the main program right main game right you take a little tangent you acquire a tool you acquire a power that you need that or you could use later on in the game right life is the same way if you need to learn mathematics if you don't know mathematics you need to learn mathematics then learn mathematics because that's going to come in handy if you don't know how to read and write properly learn how to read and write properly if you don't know how to write an essay and get your ideas across learn how to write an essay and get your ideas across that's the best type of investment you can make if you're ill health right if you're living a crappy life if like lifestyle where you're out of shape 
get back into shape because the first thing the number one cause of bankruptcy in Canada and United States is ill health end of story a lot of people say oh I need to invest you know this much money into this fund because when I when I retire it's gonna be worth this much I go well that that is, is one week's worth of hospital bills that's it why don't you eat healthier instead of putting that money into the stock market or whatever fund you're gonna put it into maybe take half of that money buy healthy organic food and eat better right that's the type of thing I'm talking about man aside from that if you want to make money this is a traders market find a market learn about it gamble <laughs> and this is not financial advice Saul UK Iraq and Syria only became a failed state after US left no uh, Iraq had a democracy Saul UK in the 1960s until Saddam Hussein put the dictators or US the CIA put Saddam Hussein in power I'm going to invest in jams and jellies <laughs> to be more anti-fragile right now snake eye <laughs> do it yourself I'm innocent he says uh, Muhammad says funny 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 elder God America is heading for a civil war in my opinion man is not strong enough to hold his shit to get together let alone the US neck man Chicho what's your your for lack of better word preference for renewable power I've been hearing more and more recently about how solar power isn't efficient uh, as some people believe and I'm seeing more people uh, take up interest in nuclear energy uh, I'm not a fan of nuclear just because the when you're creating as Einstein would say hell of a way to heat water right uh, I think that's quoted from Einstein but if you're using something that the byproduct is gonna last for millions of years or billions of years uh, the waste product is not a good source of energy even I don't care how much energy is producing right now right the best way deck man as far as I'm concerned for us to get more secure energy supply is to use less energy right it's not about necessarily finding a better energy supply which it is solar yeah solar has a limit to it we need new technology to come in to kick up the percent right to kick up that capacity for us you know people say you know mathematicians physicists I have done the numbers and we can never pass break past that breaking point the top that what is it 35 percent efficiency or whatever it is right I don't believe that I think new technology will be rolled in where solar power becomes more efficient right but it's not just consuming at the same level and finding better energy supply right it's think about the type of energy that we're spending okay it's it's a it's got to be a multi-pronged approach no please do venting is healthy Clark part says Chicho do you have some cryptocurrencies the whole point about cryptocurrencies is the anonymity and the privacy I don't recommend anyone saying that they have or they do not have cryptocurrencies uh, explore the world right really it it's extremely important to stay with the model that cryptocurrencies were built on it's about anonymity Donite how are you doing well brother you missed a great live stream Donite you need to watch this I think you'll appreciate it I hope so anyway and your feedback would have been fun jams jellies liqueurs will be an awesome alt currency in the future yeah, food gang if the economy has a serious hiccup certain things might become a commodity that might become currency in certain places a year ago toilet paper right get all the gold coins sonic style <laughs> I'm a killing weapon you know. <laughs> I will let others throw the books <laughs> nice <laughs> and you got to stay healthy elder God stays healthy he's is, is one of the most anti-fragile things you can do right good idea uh, maybe I'll branch out and add some hot sauce and pickles to the list of investments nice Muhammad it's amazing how well you know about Iran's history dr. Uh, Mozadak and Shah yeah yeah I think every Iranian uh, knows uh, Muhammad water exhaust speaking of power what do you make of nuclear fission uh, Tokomak 
and its realistic prospects of infinite it, is it a but i don't i think our technology will reach a point where we might even have zero point energy where we can accumulate get energy from almost anything that's where we need to go okay if certain prophecies come to pass we will be plenty of so <laughs> in 2023 <laughs> <All the God. laughs> i don't know uh, lark mark says i'm not uh, too sure about crypto uh, currency that's just me uh one of the big problems with cryptos with bitcoin is it's using so much energy to do the mining is that a a, a good way to use our resources uh, i i uh, you know i got my issues with that man if that's the fan i'm running to the library first snake snake i do it yourself says uh book or tool library uh both uh, have a book library gang i there's a reason why i have all these books i have a whole bunch of how to do yourself how to build a house i got books on how to build a house how to build how to do plumbing how to do electricity how to do all this stuff right just in case you know and they're amazing to have man right right it sounds like a collusion course with bitcoin up time we're almost two hours elder god thank you gang let's call the stream thank you for being here thank you for the follows thank you for the subs mods thank you for taking care of business um i hope you found this useful um if you want to know what this is all about i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o if you want to support this work if you want to know what this is all about which is basically layered on mathematics follow the work on patreon okay as you can tell it's a links up everywhere okay i don't put anything behind paywall everything's creative commons you can follow the work and see what it is that we're sharing and after a while if you think this work deserves your support so that we can roll out more information and create more content support this work through patreon and those of you who've been supporting this work through patreon thank you very much for the support gang water exile i think chicho should create a, a joker going crypto i don't know lord boy thank you chicho much love much love gang mc mike thank you chicho love the stream my pleasure man thank you can i have a fast vote one for beer two for pop uh beer beer better than pop <laughs> Cheryl says two for pop <laughs> three snake eyes says love your stream lord uh, lord Bar, thank you man thank you thank you so my pleasure Muhammad. my pleasure gang we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in the chat and the discussion twitch is where you want to be at and gang again thank you for the follows thank you for the subs thank you for the points thank you for uh bits and whatnot and the discussion 100 percent and mods thank you for taking care of business what a shock mark <laughs> says great flow everyone awesome stream awesome stream thanks cheryl pop stock skyrocket <laughs> elder god gets on the game i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on parlor Hello, Mines, VK, Gab, and Twitter. And we do have a Discord page. We do have a Discord page. You can join our Discord and participate in the discussion. You can go to our chat anytime you want. Type in exclamation mark social and all the links will pop up at the bottom. You'll see the Discord link. Okay. For live streams where we don't have any visuals, the audio will be uploaded to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O is a podcast, and they should be available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and iTunes. And we will be uploading the stream to SensorTube, BitChute, and Rumble. And if we have enough points, we'll upload it to Odyssey, but we don't have enough points yet. <laughs> I don't know how to get points. They need a whole bunch of personal information, which I'm not willing to give them, right? uh and if you're on those platforms you can uh support this work by liking joining subscribing uh sharing commenting and if you're on youtube you can support this work by joining youtube membership and there's a button there and for those of you who are supporting this work through youtube membership thank you very much for the support okay gang i hope you guys have a fantastic day tomorrow evening current events thursday morning investing in comic books i'm putting the 
tables together there's a lot of them going through i'm going down the rabbit hole in the realm of collectibles and we're going to look at uh return on investment on those and do a future projection to see what things may be worth and see what type of comics are getting a good return it's all based on the first comic book haul we did uh, that we uploaded in 2015 six years ago and we'll hit up the other ones later yeah fun topic fun topic 4 a.m is not evening 4 a.m is not evening <laughs> the god says good morning to elder god tomorrow when we do our current event stream gang i hope you have a fantastic day and i'll see you guys tomorrow and or thursday bye everyone